Hi, 7th graders. It's time for 3.4b, part 1. I actually separated 3.4b into two parts. So part 1 is compound inequalities, and part 2 is absolute value inequalities. That'll be your next note set. So you only need to do part 1 for today. So compound inequality, what is it? It's a pair of basic or simple inequalities that are linked by the words and or or. So for example, we're going to look at the and inequality first. There's two statements with the word and in between. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 4. Another way to say an and inequality is to put the variable smack dab in the middle with those values on either side. So this is still, still saying that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and that x is less than 4. It's just one statement altogether. And you can, you can only do that with the and ones. All right, so take a look says the word and means both inequalities must be true. So let's just start off by graphing each of these separately. It says that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That means that x can be negative 2 or all the values greater. The other says that x is less than 4. So it means it can't be 4, but it can be all the values less than 4. When you graph the and, the solution contains the point that both graphs have in common, or where they intersect. So, I think a nice visual for this is, if you look at the negative 2 spot and the 4 spot, those are the areas that they have in common. So, when you do the graph of this, x can still be equal to negative 2, x can't be 4, it can be all those values in between. So basically, when you graph an and, it's all of the values where they will overlap, all the values that they have in common. An and will always look like that. You'll have a dot on either side with the lines connected. It'll be connected in the middle. So it just looks kind of like a line segment. The compound or inequality is going to look a little bit different. There's not a shortcut statement. So if I said that x was less than negative 2 or that x was greater than or equal to 4, that's the only way I could say it. I can't put the x in the middle. It's not written like that. The word or means that x must be a solution to one of the two inequalities. So if x is less than negative 2, it can't be negative 2. That graph would look like this. If x is greater than or equal to 4, that means that x can be 4 and all the values greater. And the graph of the solution to this one is just a union of the two graphs together. So I'm just going to take the less than negative 2 and the equal to or greater than 4 and put them all on one grid. So an or graph kind of looks like oars in a boat. That's how I look at it. So you're sitting in the boat, you have oars going out on either side, and or will always look like that. They're not going to be connected like the other. They're going to be heading out like oars in a boat. That's how you can remember it. So take a look. I have writing and graphing examples here. So I want you to be able to write an inequality statement. This is kind of a review from the first section. And then we want to be able to graph that. So it says a number x is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. So we can start off writing this as two separate statements. It says x is greater than negative 8. That would just be written like that. And then he's, here's a key word. It says and. So this will be an and one and less than or equal to. What's less than or equal to? That x still. x is less than or equal to 4. So that's one way of writing this. I could also do the shortcut statement. I do want you to be able to do both. I think it's pretty important to recognize both. And if you're going to do the shortcut statement, all you do is put x in the middle. You put the lower value to the left, the higher value to the right, and we can see that when x is being compared to the negative 8, it opens up to the x. So I want to make sure it opens up to the x here. And when x is being compared to the 4, it points at the x. So that's what it would look like that way. When you complete the graph of this and, we're just going to plot the lower value on the left, the higher value on the right. And since it's an and, it should look like this. And we can kind of make sure that if x is greater than negative 8, it means it can't be negative 8. 
but it can be the values greater than. I'm only going to shade a little bit of that right now. And if x is less than or equal to 4, it means it can be 4. So I'm going to close that circle and also all the values less than that. So we can see that, yep, it would be shaded in the middle just like that. Okay, let's try another one of those. A number y is at most 0 or at least 7. So this is going to be an or. The word or is right there. If y is at most 0, that means that y can be 0, but that's the most it can be. So that means that it can be equal to or it can be less than 0. And or at least 7. So y, if it's at least 7, that means it can be 7. Or it can be all the values greater than 7. 7 is just the lowest that it can be. And there's not a shortcut statement for the OR graph. So again, I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to put the lower value on the left, the higher value on the right. If Y is less than or equal to 0, that means I'm going to close this up and shade to the left. If Y is greater than or equal to 7, that means it can be 7. So I'm going to close that up and shade it to the right. So again, the OR, it should look like ORs. All right, let's try a few more. Turn your page. I'll turn my page too. <laughs> okay, yes. Now these aren't just simple little ones. We actually have to do some work on these, don't we? So take a look. To solve an AND compound, you must separate the statement into two equations and graph the points that overlap. To solve an OR, solve each part of the statement and place both solutions on the graph. So we're going to start out with the ANDs. And we can tell this is a word, this is an and, because I don't see the word and, but I see that I've got this middle portion with numbers on either side. It doesn't contain the word or. So this would be an and. When you see an and, I think the easiest way to separate it is to kind of separate it at the signs. And I'll use circles quite often. I'll probably do that in class. So this is one statement right here. I stop with the other inequality symbol. So I have negative 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus 3. And I have another inequality statement right here. So I stop at the end of that inequality symbol, and that's my other one. So the other inequality is 2x plus 3 is less than 9. Again, I know it's an and because I don't have the word or, and I can see they're all kind of joined together in one statement, and and is the only one that has the shortcut statement. So at this point, you just need to solve these two equations. So let's do that. Just nice little two-steppers. I'm going to add a negative 3 to each side, or subtract 3. I get negative 8 is less than or equal to 2x. I need to divide by 2. And x is greater than or equal to negative 4. You know how that drives me crazy, right? So we can say x negative 4. And if it opens up to the x, let's make it open up to the x again. So there's our first, and our second, I'm going to go ahead and add a negative 3. 2x is going to equal 6, divide by 2, and x is less than 3. So here, these are my two statements. The word and should be in between them. So this is what I'm going to graph. It should look like a line segment by the time I'm done. So negative 4 is the lower value of the 2, so I'm going to put that on the left. 3 is the higher. I'll put that on the right. So it says here that x is greater than or equal to negative 4. I'm going to close that dot. And it can be greater than or equal to. That means it's going to head in this direction here. So I'm just going to shade a little bit of that, and I'll close it up in a minute. x is less than 3. That means it can't be 3. It can only be less than that. That's the graph. That's it. Those are the points where both of those graphs would intersect. This one would keep going that way. This one would keep going that way. But these are the points that they have in common. All right, let's try another one. I'm going to separate this off into my two statements. Again, I can tell it's an and, basically because I don't see the word or. So we have negative 4 is less than or equal to 3n plus 5. And the other equation that we have within this, so I'm going to write the word and, 3n plus 5 is less than 11. 
So we need to solve both of those. Add a negative 5, add a negative 5, so negative 9. And I have 3n left over here. We'll divide by 3. And n is greater than or equal to negative 3, or I can write it like this, because the other way drives me bonkers. <laughs> All right, let's solve this one. Add a negative 5 to each side. So 3n is left here, 6 is left here. We'll divide by 3, and n is less than 2. So this is an and, so my solution statement is right there. Voila. Now to graph this, again, I'm going to make two lines. The lower value goes to the left, the higher value goes to the right. n is greater than or equal to negative 3. That means it can be negative 3, so I'm going to close that circle. And I know I'm going to be shading this direction. n is less than 2. That means it can't be 2, so I'm going to open that circle. And less than means shade to the left. So the points which the graph would overlap would be that. So this means that n can be all of these values within here because both of those statements need to be true. Okay, now we're going to deal with some ors. Okay, same thing. It's already separated by an or statement. I need to solve both equations. So I would just add 4 to each side to solve this one, and n is greater than 5. I'm going to add 4 to this one, and n is less than 1. So my solution statement is this, n is greater than 5 or n is less than 1. I'm going to put the lower digit on the left, the higher digit on the right, just like it would appear on a number line. It needs to be in order. And it says that n is greater than 5. That means it cannot be 5. It can only be the values greater. And n is less than 1. That means it can't be 1, only the values less than that. And you can see that, yes, this does look like the oars of a boat or paddle but the word or is more appropriate here to represent the or statement. Anyhow, okay, these ones are a little bit more complicated. It's still an or, I can see the word or there, so I need to solve both equations. So to start off, I'm gonna add a negative 10 to each side. Negative three n is left here and three is left here. And here I'm gonna divide by a negative three and I know that negative 1 is left over here, but we just divided by a negative, right? That means we need to flip the direction of that sign, if you recall from our last lesson. So instead of leaving it less than or equal to, it needs to be greater than or equal to. Or, now let's solve this one. Okay, I have a variable on each side here. Since I want the variable to end up on the left anyhow, let's move this 5n. So to cancel it out from this side, I just need to add the opposite of it. I'm left with negative 3n on this side. 12 on this side. We're going to divide by a negative 3. So we just divided by a negative. That means I know I have n left here and negative 4 left here. Originally this was greater than or equal to. I need to flip that sign because we divided by a negative. So my solution should look like that. To graph this, I'm going to put the lower value on the left. Remember with negative, the higher the digit, the lower the value. So negative 4 should be written here, negative 1 should be written here. If you do it the other way, is it wrong? Uh-huh, your number line needs to be in the correct order. So please make sure that you're always putting the lower digit to the left on the number line. All right, n is greater than or equal to negative 1. That means it can be negative 1 or all the values greater. And n is less than or equal to negative 4. That means it can be negative 4 or all the values less than that. So again, they're pointing outward just like the oars of a boat. All right, so we've gone ahead and graphed those statements that were given. Now what I'd like you to do is to be able to write a statement from a graph. So in looking at this first one, it says write the compound inequality for each graph. When you look at this, the first thing you should decide is, is this an and or an or? And I'm hope you're saying, I hope you're saying or because you can see that these graphs look like the ors, like the paddles. So I'm going to go ahead and write an or right in the middle here. And you can use whatever letter you want. Um, I will use, let's see, M for math. Why not? So I'm going to have M. I'm going to have an M. Now I'm going to write the digits that I'm comparing M to, and this is basically the point on the graph. So the first value I see for M is negative 15. The second value I see is negative 8. And then we're going to fill our symbols in last. 
So we see that this is a closed circle in the negative 15. That means it can be equal to it. And the direction is pointing to the left. So I'm going to make this point to the left. That means less than. So m is less than or equal to negative 15. Or m can be negative 8 or can be all the values greater. It's pointing to the right. So I'm going to make that point to the right. It's that simple. All right, let's try another one. Then we can be done. We're almost there, so close. All right, I'm hoping that the first thing you see is, okay, this is an and. Now remember, there are two different ways you can write an and. I think the shortcut statement's gonna be a lot easier for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use m for math again. I'm gonna put it right in the middle because in the shortcut statement, the variable's right in the middle and the values on the graph are on either side. So you can see that there, there's one of the points is zero and the other is 20. So I basically just took the information from this graph. There's the zero right there. There's a 20 right there. And M can be zero. It can also be all the values. It can be greater than zero. So it's heading that way. So I need to make sure that my graph looks like that. I'm sorry, I made that so high up there. I don't know why I did that. But M is greater than or equal to zero. So if M is greater than, it needs to be opened up to the M. And M can't be 20, but it can be the values less than 20. So M is less than 20. If that is just totally confusing, what you can do is you can go ahead and use the AND statement in the middle and do like we did before. So I can write the word AND here. I can list my M like we did with the other. I see one of the values M is being compared to is 0. The other is 20. And M is greater than or equal to 0 and m is less than 20. So this or this are fine for this and inequality. We'll do more practice tomorrow. Thanks for listening in.